guys, Miss Osuna here, and we are going to do a brocade design. So what I've done is just chosen a few shapes that are in a brocade design. So I'm not actually rendering the full pattern, but I've just chosen a few of those shapes and I'm placing it in a larger scale on my illustration. And then I am going to just do certain impressions of this brocade in the background with swirly lines. So as you can see, I've started off with a design that is paisley and then I just have some random circular shapes with squiggles and you can use any design you want. So I'm just coloring right over the pencil line with a metallic marker. This one is metallic gold, but any colors that you choose would be totally fine as well. And if you don't have metallic marker, that's okay. You can also use whatever markers you do have because we are going to be going on top of this marker several times with layers. So it's not absolutely essential that you have metallic markers, but in a brocade fabric, there really and truly are metallic threads. So that's why I've chosen a metallic marker. So because this is going to be a dark blue gown, I am going to start off by letting that metallic gold dry. Once it's fully dry, I'm going to use my blue marker and start working on some of the background. So I'm just going to fill in some of the background, but you'll notice I'm going to do it in a way where it feels like stripes and kind of streaky. This is that first layer of texture because the brocade fabrics are truly woven with a way that allows you to see a lot of texture on the finished result. So underneath on this very first, first, first layer, you're going to leave the background streaky, almost like stripes as you fill in around your gold. And that's on purpose because when you layer on top of that, that is just gonna add to that texture and brocade fabrics are very textured. So you can see right here, I don't want to smooth it out. I'm not putting a blender on top of it at this point. I just want to have sort of a streaky, but mostly filled in effect for layer number one. Also, you want to keep in mind that there are a few bits of white that show through and that's good because of course we want to have some light. So choose your lights and your darks as far so as, as your I light speed side this versus up just your dark for the side. Sake of this time around, I've chosen time. my light source I to want be more you on to the left. Aware that number Normally one, you I don't have to go to super fast on um, a rendering like this. You can take some more time on the right. This is not the common thing that you will be doing all of the time as a fashion designer. You will not always be rendering a brocade. It's more of a rare occasion, but it's important for you to know how to do it. Another thing that I want to make mention of here is that this is my first shade of blue. Normally, I suggest that you have three different shades to make one. So I have, for example, a medium blue, and then I might have a lighter blue, and then I might have a slightly darker blue. So those three shades I would use all together to make a blue. What you'll need to do is be sure you go into the art supply store wherever you purchase your markers from and actually scribble on the pad of paper to be sure that your shades are similar enough. You want them to be close enough so that they can blend because if they're too far apart in color, they won't blend nicely in between. So this is my first shade of blue and again, that doesn't necessarily matter that you use the same exact shades I'm using. You can use any shades that you have, but this particular color is called Lapis Blue, L-A-P-I-S. But again, it doesn't really matter which actual shade you use. As long as you have three shades or even two shades you could get away with, and those three shades absolutely need to be close enough together that you can actually blend them 
but different enough that you can see the difference between the darker and the lighter. So it's a gradient effect that we're going for. Now we're gonna get ready to add the second shade. So once again, this is darker than the first, but it's close enough that they can blend and feel like one color. So here I am on the shadow spaces. So each time you'll notice where there's sort of a frown and a smile at the hemline, I am gonna put on the left side and the right side of the frowns a shadow. So as you draw these shadows, they are more wide at the bottom, so they're definitely wider, but then they're more narrow at the top, and this is the key. They're more narrow at the top, but they don't actually touch at the top. And so what makes this feel more three-dimensional is that we are putting these shadows on top of the actual gold. And then that's also on top of the streaky first layer that we've put. Also, I'm shadowing on the edges by the hip because we know that underneath the dress is the body. So that's where the legs are on the dress. So on my right and left sides at the hip, I'm adding a little bit of shadow there, right on the right side of our thigh and the left side of our thigh near the hip area. So next, I am gonna go back to color number one and start to fill in the very bottom going upward. And then I'm blending right next to that first shadow. So you can see it doesn't look like two different types of blue. It actually starts to feel like one blue, even though they are different shades. That's why it's extremely important when you're buying your markers to go to the store and actually scribble, open the marker, scribble on a page, to see and art supply stores do supply that they supply paper and they allow you to test so notice i'm making these frown shapes more prominent and then i'm going from the bottom upward just to define that hem edge as you're doing this you want to be sure that you keep in mind not to go over your lights so for me, I have more lights on the left side this time around, but you could choose to put your lights on the right side. That's actually what I normally do. I just like to mix it up because what you're doing is you are creating your light source and your shadow source, but not everyone sees things in the same way. So I mix it up as a fashion design instructor and do it sometimes where the shadow is on the right side instead of the left always because i know i have different students and everyone needs to practice in different ways to see what works for them so my encouragement to you is that you don't have to do it the way i'm doing it with the light sources this time on the left side if it works for your brain better to put the light on the right side then do that the main thing that you want to take away from here is that we are solidifying this hemline and we're blending on top of that darker shadow so we're going right on top of that darker shadow but we are starting from the bottom edge moving upward being sure not to cover over entirely those lights we want to keep those lights as you are blending and moving upward you also want to keep in mind that the lines at the top as you are blending should not touch, so don't make them touch. Now at this time, you'll notice that I am going to start to color over everything and start to begin to smooth things out gently, not entirely, but I'm just adding more layers of color on top of everything. <laughs> and now for the fun part 
go on ahead and grab your gold metallic marker because now you can color on top of those gold lines once again and you can still see through so you're not really starting from scratch. Even though you put the blue on top, you should be able to still see through. So now you can bring those gold tones back out once again. But this time, notice I'm actually coloring next to the first line. So I have two lines. One of them is lighter because the blue is on top. And then the other one that I'm putting on now, it feels more bold. And you do want those two lines so that you just add to the layering effect. Now we're adding the first blue tone. So that's the lighter blue tone that we've used. We are adding that around the gold. This starts to give a feeling of shadow around that gold. Now I'm intensifying the shadow with the second color blue around the gold. So this is my darker, that navy deep, deep, deep blue. Same one I used for the shadows at the hemline. And I'm just gonna go around the same area to intensify those shadows. So you always wanna add your depth gradually so instead of starting with the darkest one, I started with the lighter blue so that I can start to see with my eye where I like to have more intense shadows. And then after finishing that, I go to my darker blue. And let your eye tell you where you want to increase the shadows. There's really no wrong way to do this because this is just amplifying the brocade gold threads.
And once again, we are now going to intensify with black colored pencil. So we're just adding more shadow right on top of where we've already added it. And once again, your taste level here is the determining factor as to how much of this you use. So you get to decide how much you want to add of the black colored pencil. Now we go to the hemline and we blend upward once again with the lighter color of our blue. In my case, it's the Lapis Blue. And we are sticking in these areas of our shadow that we've already determined, but we're going on top of the gold. So notice how it almost smears and it makes it feel like real fabric being folded right on top of this paper makes it feel three-dimensional so the wet marker as you add from hemline going upward smears over the black and the metallic and it makes it feel much more realistic now just under the bust and barely touching I would say the bottom third of the bust going ahead and put a smile shape start with the lightest blue of course so this is touching two and a quarter and then a tiny bit higher up to about two and an eighth next i have a midnight blue colored pencil and i'm going to use that for another layer so i'm going to smear from the bottom upward just a little bit up and down strokes right on top of everything on top of the gold in that shadow area and this is giving that grainy texture and now also I'm going over where the leg is underneath on the left and right sides and then a little bit where the bust is so that just gives a grainy texture and the grain actually looks more like threads and that's what we want we want to see these different threads because that's how a brocade fabric is woven together you see all the cool metallic threads and the threads from underneath. And I'm switching over to black colored pencil and I'm going right on top of that blue 
so that you can see yet again very lightly and very gently you can see the blue through the black and it really starts to look like a brocade fabric Thank you.